James Kaufman, World News Report today, July 29th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Geomagnetic storm watches in effect July 29th, 30th, and 31st. Again, let's say geomagnetic storm watch July 29th through 31st. UTC starting off with a G1, perhaps followed by a G3, and then a G2. Although they may be underestimating these storms, several coronal mass ejections will likely reach Earth and lead to increased geomagnetic activity. Coronal mass ejections are eruptions of solar material. When they arrive at Earth, a geomagnetic storm can result. Watches at the G3 level are infrequent, but not uncommon. The coronal mass ejections are anticipated to arrive at Earth beginning later on July 29th, as in today. The general public should keep informed by visiting our webpage for any forecast changes and updates. At levels G3, Aurora Borealis may become visible over many of the northern states and some of the lower Midwest states as well. This means radiation, folks. Geomagnetic storm watches in effect 29th through 31st up to a G3 strong geomagnetic storm. This was published today, the 29th at 1355 UTC time. Geomagnetic storm watches are out for the 29th through 31st of July due to a number of coronal mass ejections. Solar activity was elevated, to say the least, through the weekend and various events, including solar flares and filament eruptions, were associated with several coronal mass ejections. Some of these coronal mass ejections are determined to have Earth-directed components, and arrival could begin as early as July 29th, due to an event early on the 27th of July. Additional coronal mass ejections recently departed the sun and are expected to arrive on July 30th and continue into the 31st. Any coronal mass ejection arrival on the 29th of July could result in G1 minor storm levels. However, the brunt of the activity is most likely on the 30th of July, when additional coronal mass ejections from the 27th and 28th of July arrive, and this could lead to G2 to G3 levels, as indicated by the WSA Inlet model. Coronal mass influences will likely continue through the 31st of July, as it takes time for coronal mass ejections to progress over and past Earth. Still, additional coronal mass ejections continue to erupt from the sun due to the number of active regions and the associated complex sunspot groups. And additional coronal mass ejection arrivals are possible. They're probable now, folks. Flare probabilities have increased and M-class solar flares, R1, R2, minor moderate events, are now expected through most of the week with a slight chance of an X-class solar flare, R3 strong, continue to follow our webpage for the latest information and forecasts. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to realize that this forecast that was just read does not take into effect the X-class solar flare that hit early this morning, along with the numerous 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe five, but at least four M-class solar flares that also popped off our sun today. I will follow this report up with a full report of today's solar flares. God bless. Please share and subscribe. This will go well into the 1st and 2nd of August and probably continue after that based on what we're seeing from these sunspots. Please also remember the Sunspot Group that created the X4 
14 solar flare that was on the back side will be coming around the limb in the next day or two. Please share, please subscribe, always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World. Space Weather Update, next. <laughs>